Bring in uh, Al Michaels, NBC Sports play-by-play voice, joining us on the program. Al, how are you? Dan, I am ready for some hockey. You are? Oh, I can't wait. This is going to be a great series. If um, if you're looking at these two matchups here, and, and I talked about this, the um, Devils being similar to the San Antonio Spurs as far as their franchise. I think they both won titles in the same year. Can you see parallels between the Spurs and the Devils that – we don't. You have to go out of your way to sort of go. Oh, by the. Oh, that's right. They are great team or great franchise. Well, th- there's no question that the you know the Spurs have been a, a great team for a number of years. Greg Popovich has been there forever. So has Tim Duncan, Tony Parker. Uh, before that, David Robinson, and they've been overlooked. I mean, to me, when I was doing the NBA, I remember coming on uh, in the Detroit San Antonio finals one of the games in uh, 05 and I said Tim Duncan's like Pete Sampras I think you'll only appreciate him after he is gone uh, and I still feel the same way about that um, you know it's just that it, maybe it's his demeanor he plays in San Antonio etc cetera, etc cetera. the Devils are kind of in the same boat in the sense that uh, they've had a um, you know great recent uh, run in terms of uh, getting to the finals Winning the Stanley Cup, Martin Brodeur, we know, is you know one of the greatest, if not the best, of, of all time. And yet, they're always going to be overlooked because across the river are the New York Rangers. And, and for you know, for whatever reason, uh, well, we we actually do know the reason. It's it's the market, it's um, the cachet, and all of the rest. So the Devils are an overlooked team in that regard. You know what I find interesting about this series, though? The Devils are a lot like the Kings. And I, you know, I watch hockey, and I, I don't think I've missed. 10 minutes of any playoff game this year. And I was more, as a Kings fan, I was more nervous uh, with the prospect of facing the Devils than the Rangers. I, I, you could see this about three or four weeks ago, that the Devils were ascending and the Rangers weren't as good as they were during the regular season. So I see um, two very similar teams having at it beginning tomorrow night. If I said that uh, you could call one sport or you could watch one sport and you had to choose, would they be the same? No, because I love announcing football, and before that, baseball. Hockey's very hard to uh, to broadcast. I mean, Mike Emmerich is maybe the best of all time and, and is just, a, to me, the most technically perfect guy in, in what would be the hardest sport to announce. As a fan, though, I have spent you know more than $300,000 <laughs> in season tickets over the last 20 years, Dan. And do you know how frustrating this has been? And it's like I'm, I'm like a 12-year-old kid now. I'm going, oh, my God. How did we get here? How did we become the Kings, the best team in the league? This, there is no, there's no fluke here. They have just steamrolled teams, and that's why you know everybody. I, I shouldn't say everybody in town is excited. Kings fans are thrilled, and of course now you get the bandwagon people and the agents getting tickets for the celebrities. Blah 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 blah. But if, if for, for those people who've loved the Kings through the years because they love hockey, uh, you, you feel like you're in some sort of a, a fantasy land right now. This really can't be happening. You think you're going to see that uh, celebrity row at the Kings? Well, there's no celebrity row, in, in a manner of speaking, everybody, you know, will, a few people will be up against the glass, and, you know, you'll try to find a few others. Uh, I mean, through the years, who's been there? Kurt Russell used to go a lot. He used to see Kurt uh, for, for years, especially at the Forum, and then he played Herb Brooks in uh, the movie Miracle, and I thought he did a fascinating and fantastic job. Did he nail that role? He did. It was tremendous. I thought, you know, he's a, he's a tremendous actor. He's a huge hockey fan. He got it. I mean, that's as close to perfection as I've seen in a movie. Now, granted, you know, there was a little license taken in that movie, which was fine. I mean, they got the story exactly right to, in terms of what had taken place and where the country was at that time. And kids who you know can't remember it obviously because they weren't around in 1980. They see that movie, and and I'm happy with the fact that they come away kind of understanding what this is about. And a lot of that had to do with uh, Kurt's portrayal of Brooks. I thought he really nailed it. He's Al Michaels, NBC Sports, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. After you called the miracle on ice, what did you do after the game? Well, after the game, remember that they empty out the arena. There were two games that day. That game started at 5 o'clock, and then at 8 o'clock was another, another game, the back end of a doubleheader in effect, as they clear the arena, bring in the people who have the tickets for the 8 o'clock game, is Sweden against Finland. So this is 32 years ago, Dan, so you're worried about tapes breaking and all of the rest of the stuff. So Ken Dryden and I were compelled to remain in the arena 
and call that game in case they had technical difficulties as they played back the tape at 8 o'clock of the U.S.-Soviet <laughs> game. So this is what Dryden and I are doing. We're doing Sweden against Finland at 8 o'clock. I didn't get back to the hotel till about 11. Our poll question today, uh, what sport would you want to see officials or referees talk to the reporters, to the media after a game? Uh, how would you weigh in on that? Well, I listened to Steve Kerr about an hour ago, and I thought he was uh, on point. You know, there's a part of you that does want to hear what they have to say, but um, I, it, it just might become one of those things where the guy keeps getting asked the same question for 15 minutes. I don't You know, to me... In a situation, obviously, like last night, how does Doc Rivers wind up with that technical foul? I'd kind of like to hear about it, but I think Steve was probably uh, right on when he said something about it being you know, sort of a cumulative effect. You don't know what took place beforehand. You can hear you know, Doc saying whatever he said, and, and then you walk away saying, well, that, that's not worthy of a technical foul, but maybe there was something behind it. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. I think, you know, and, and it, it is true, Dan, that some of these people are made available from time to time when there's controversy. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, it, it, I'm, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I come down on this thing. I, I think that uh, the problem is you, the the officials, if they make a mistake, they'll begin to parse it. You won't know what they're talking about. You'll get a lot of blah blah blah. But on balance, um, it, it's something the league. The leagues need to think about in terms of you know very controversial calls, letting them be made available, which they are from time to time. What sport do you think is the toughest to officiate? I think football is. Uh, you know, Steve Kerr talked about in basketball. There's probably a foul on every play, especially in postseason. And you and I both know. I mean, you could you could throw a flag on every play in football because you just don't know. You know what is. We still don't know. I mean, it, it, we will go to our graves, and our great-grandchildren will go to their graves, and we still won't know what pass interference really is. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. We have to understand that, hey, look, here are the parameters. We're trying to, we're trying to figure out exactly what it is. But uh, I, I guarantee you, 100 years from now, people will still be arguing whether it was offensive or pa defensive pass interference or whether it was interference at all. I know that when I talked to you at the Super Bowl and I told you that uh, I like the L.A. Kings, and the first thing you said is, well, that goalie, he grew up uh, where the man cave is. Yes, he and, did. And I, I said, yeah, and then you go, I'm a season ticket holder with the Kings. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about if you, you look at Quick, and, and here he is with Brodeur, and Brodeur, I don't know if he has to do anything more to be considered the best goalie, or can you put him in? Is he better than Patrick Waugh? Where does he fit in with Grant Fuhr? Or whoever you want to throw in there. The brilliance of Brodeur and doing it at age 40, uh, how, do you, how do you summarize that? Well, I mean, he, the other guys didn't do I mean, Patrick Waugh lasted quite a while. you got to put Ken Dryden, who I mentioned before, my partner for the you know, Olympic telecast. Uh, I, I put Ken in the Sandy Koufax role uh, in hockey in the sense that he, he retired early. Uh, he had a spectacular run, and Ken just wanted to do more things with his life. He, you know, you, you, through the 70s. You know, Dryden is in that is in that mix. Terry Sawchuk went back a million years when yeah. he played with Detroit. So it's always difficult to assess guys from different generations against each other. But surely Brodeur at 40, I mean, there's, you're, you're, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. We know that. You'll never get that question answered definitive, definitively the greatest of all time. But, I mean, to be able to do what he's been doing for as long as he's done it, I mean, he, he's certainly in the argument. And, Would, and, and Quick quick might be in the argument someday, too. I mean, he's, he's tw 26 years old. You know, if they had the, the Conn Smythe thing right now, i got to tell you, the Kings have four guys right now who could win the Conn Smythe. Quick being one of them. Dustin Brown's been fantastic. Another, you know, American-born player from Ithaca, New York. Andrzej Kopitar, who was the first Slovenian to play in the National Hockey League, uh, would be one guy. And then Drew Doughty, who we saw uh, play on Team Canada in the Olympics in, uh, in 2010 in Vancouver, and a guy who has a, a gold medal. Uh, Drew Doughty, 22 or 23 years old, as good a defenseman as there is in the National Hockey League right now. So who are you taking? Kings. Kings. And, you know, look, as a Kings fan, what do I want? Here's what I want. I want them to either win it in four or in six. Because you don't want to skate the cup on the road. It's as simple as that. So games three, four, and six are in Los Angeles. So what's better than that? I mean, as great as it would be for them to win it on, you know, in any number of games, you're sitting there on television watching them skate the cup in the Prudential Center. I'd rather have it at home, obviously.
I have to sit with my mother-in-law tomorrow night. Yeah. Diehard Devils fan. Really? And she knows that I picked the Kings. Yeah. So. Well, she's won enough championships. It doesn't matter. Well, tell me, listen, you've been in Staples Center. You walk in, the Lakers have like 800 championship banners. You got the uniforms retired. West and Baylor and Chamberlain, Abdul-Jabbar, Magic, the whole thing. You walk in, what do the Kings have? Two scraggly little banners. <laughs> One, the Smythe Division, 89. The other, the Campbell Conference, 93. Do you realize in 45 years of hockey, Dan, the Kings have finished first in their division once? Not even this year. They finished third, third in the Pacific. At least we're going to get another banner. We know we're going to get the Western Conference banner up there. But do you realize how ridiculous that looks in the in Staples Center? I like you went we on that. You know, I'm totally into this thing. I'm like ridiculous. I can tell. I'm doing everything, but when, you know, my wife's waving the towel. My my grandkids. It's like the craziest thing I've ever seen. Uh, good to talk to you, Al. Thanks Dan, for joining us, buddy. Take care, buddy. All right. Al Michaels, NBC Sports.